Rajesh, if, if I move on to you, uh, I think it's interesting. You, you're based in Singapore, and, and your your companies are essentially touching on a lot of different aspects, both of the analog and the digital space within shipping, of course. Um, when we when we talk about the importance of government actors and international organizations, they are of course key to, to really accelerating, as as Ampi and, and Mats have highlighted. Um, how do you rate the, the current participation of governments and international organizations in Singapore? And what would you like to see more from them in order to help accelerate uh, some of these standards and, and even talent, to be honest, uh, needs that the companies have in shipping? So thanks, Michael. Uh, I would like to perhaps split that question into two. One is to maybe touch upon a little bit on why is this challenge in shipping? Uh, in terms of driving tech adoption. Uh, first and foremost, if you look at how the supply chain is, there is clearly split incentives right across, even from a time a ship is being constructed, the shipyard versus a sh asset owner versus an operator versus a commercial operator, a tech manager and the crew. And the same goes with data points that are available. Uh, you will see that when it comes to shipboard operations, the maximum data is available on the ship and it trickles down. Uh, and when it comes to commercially fixing ships, the commercial operator has the maximum information and it trickles down. And the reason that this is happening is because there are split incentives. So that is one I think. And the second is that ships are a little bit different from s base because it's quite disconnected. The leg where we are disconnected is quite larger than you know some of the other things, which means that most of the technology will have to have human in the loop to start with. So in a sense, which also means that they clearly need to see value for them to adopt. So it should not be another just uh, a tool that gives them data, but it should be something that supports them to make better decisions. Then that comes to the point where we talked about, I think Ambi touched upon, is people and process. So it, it, there has to be a tool that needs to sync along with people and process. Uh, you know, shipping in, and most people, I think to be honest, including me, when we talk about digital transformation, we actually talk about digitizing data that's manual, you know, and, and the real digitalization happens when you revisit your processes and change them. And the digital transformation then happens about how you change the business and operating model. So I think that's the, that's the second bucket. And then like what somebody said, tech is often seen as a differentiator. And like Matt's put it, you really need to know what's core to you and what's not core to you. And you clearly need to know when you should compete versus when you should collaborate. Um, and the last, I would also put the fourth bucket is that people should start seeing this as an infrastructure upgrade and not just like another thing, because this is a connected ship is going to be a reality, which means that you need to invest into infrastructure, just like how we adopted Microsoft Office and the other tools when we bought a computer. You know? Uh, so that's the thing. And if you put that in perspective and then say, what can the government do? I would suggest one is to build a regulatory and statutory uh, framework for data. And, and for building a statutory framework, let's not start conquering the world right from the day go, but let's find areas where there is mutual need for data. You know, like, for example, we are doing with Singapore and MPA, uh, uh, you know, we're building a joint industry project on how we can optimize uh, discharge on tankers or how do we can optimize do surveys uh, there are many things and second i think the governments can think about how we are you know articulating about the need for a carbon levy in decarbonization there can be an incentive for people being transparent and open because i think the fundamental thing about sustainability and decarbonization is that you need to get accurate measurements and, and a good place to start is to find actually what's your carbon footprint and then incentivize the customers with being open and doing something that is tangible. To give you an example, like now in Alpauri, we have found thousands of, we saved thousands of tons of CO2, uh, which is, okay, interesting. But what's more interesting is how have you saved real dollars in the voyage optimization? But the moment you start addressing the incentives and the carbon footprint, it also starts a different discussion. And then I think if this is true, then we need to build a good ecosystem which has the right partners and the right model to start. When I say model, I think the business model, the operating model and the cooperation or the incentive sharing need to be clearly thought through because otherwise everybody will start hesitating. What data belongs to me? What can I share? What can I do for the greater good? 
So I would again sum that up in these four four buckets. Uh, Michael, I don't know if you answered your question, but that's my. Point. No, you 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 not only did, but you also I think provided a really great segue to sort of the next level because essentially what we're talking about now is the structural challenges of the industry, right? But at the end of the day, regardless of those challenges, each and every company can still do something to improve adoption of their technologies, right? And and you touched as as did Ampi and Mats as well, you know, the importance of you know getting the right uh, people and processes. And essentially, if, if I was to interpret it a little bit differently, I would say there's a need for also having use cases. Like, where does the journey start, right? At, be it on regulatory or on the commercialization of these different initiatives, right? So essentially, uh, uh, you know, let's let's try to take that to the next more uh, in the sort of company level. Um, and and really, I would love to hear, uh, Matt, from you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, 